All right, so we just got done talking about condition statements, so we're going to get into loops, and the first one I'm going to cover is the for loop because it's probably the most popular of the loops and the one that you're going to use the most. So how does it work? It's actually a lot simpler than uh, other programming for loops that I've used. In this one, you just say for, and then you make up a variable name. So I'm going to say n, and then in range, and then give it a number. So I'm going to say 10. This is another one that needs a colon at the end of the line. And you'll know if you did it right because it will automatically indent, especially in Spider. And then I'm just going to print N. All right, so if I run this, it should print, of course, in computer science, it should start at zero and print up to nine. So let's go ahead and run it. And as you can see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which equals 10. And if I change that to a 5 and rerun it, it only change, it goes up to 4. Now, of course, this doesn't really show you a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a couple other examples that we'll get into down the road. The first one is something called an array, and it's just a list of anything. And for this one, I'm going to have a list of fruits. All right, so this is how you make an array. It's kind of like doing a variable. You give it a name. So for this one, I just called it fruits. You set it equal to, and then you do brackets. And inside the brackets, you put in whatever you want. And if it's a string, it has to be surrounded by quotes or double quotes. And then you separate each one with a comma. And that is your array. So we have apple, banana, blueberry, cherry, and strawberry. Now, I could do this because there's five in there. So I could do, do for fruit in here, which means I have to change this to fruit. And I could leave it as range five, like I say, because there are five in there. And if I run this, it should print them out. Oh, actually, to get at the actual name, okay, so these are the addresses of the name. So this is address 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So to get at them, you have to do fruits. So you have to access the array. And then I want to get to the actual fruit. Okay, so like I say, you can call these whatever you want. So if I want to get to the fruit, and I could have called this F, and I'll show you here in just a minute, then I can just run this now because I'm accessing fruits and then getting to the actual fruit, which I named right here. And as you can see, we have apple, banana, blueberry, cherry, and strawberry. Now, just to show you, you can name this whatever you want, but you have to change it in here as well. And if I run it again, of course, we have the same thing. But giving it a hard-coded number here isn't really good because if I add another thing in here, so I don't know if it's a fruit or not, but I'm just going to put a kiwi in here and then rerun it. Of course, I lose my strawberry because I only did it out for a range of five. So the best way to do that is to get the length 
of the variable fruit. So how many, you know, how many items are in there? So the way we do that is we type in len for length, and then in parentheses we put fruits, and that should give me the length of the array or the number of items in the array. So now if I rerun this, I should get the entire list, and I do, and if I added another thing in here, and we'll say a mango, all right, and as you can see, I've added mango in there. It's running off my screen there, but I've got an additional item in my list. So by doing it this way, you don't have to change your code each time you update the array. And of course, I get them all. So now that's another example of how to use the for loop. Another one would be if I was to want to loop over characters or check, you know, how many characters are in a string of text. So let me change fruits up here. We're just going to go in, prompt a user for some text. All right, so I got rid of the fruits array. Now I've got this text, and I'm going to have it so that I can put whatever text I want in down here. And then we're going to check the characters. So I'm going to do a char. And just like before, in range, we're getting a length, so this is not going to change here, of text. All right, so that works the same way. Then, what do I want to do down here? Well, we'll start out and show you this, first of all. So we're going to print text. And then in here, the character, or the char. All right, so I'll start with something simple. Let me go ahead and run this. Prompts me for text. I'm just going to put in my name. Now, when I hit enter, of course, this is going to print out the characters one on top of each other because that's just the way the print function works. But as you can see, it prints them all. So I want something that I can add to a text field and then print it out once it's all done. So let me create another variable up here and I'm just going to call it T and I'm going to set it equal to an empty string alright just like that T equals empty string and then down here I'm going to add to the T, so T plus equals, that's how we append, and then, of course, text char. So let me copy that, control C, pop it in here, and then I want to back that out because if it's indented it's going to fall under this for loop so if you unindent it then it happens after the for loop and I don't want to print out the char anymore I want to print out T so let me just back that up and now it should print out my name just as is so if I run it again type in my name hit enter and as you can see now I have David because it just added each character and it didn't give it a line feed because of the uh, print function so now what else can we do with this we can have a counter in here so I'll just use C for counter we'll set that equal to zero to start 
and we can do the same thing down here. So for the counter, we'll do C plus equals, and then add one to it each time through the loop. So on the first time through the loop, it'll be one, two, three, and so on. So for David, we should get five. So let me rerun this. Oh, we have to have a print thing down here. So let me copy that. And print C down there. Type in my name again. And now it should print out my name and then just below it how many characters are in it. And there's five characters. Now we can use this. I can grab some text. So let me grab some text here. So I can pop in the text that I just copied, which are a thousand words. And as you can see, it's a pretty good amount of text that I copied in there. I have no clue how many characters are in here, but it's going to count them all. And actually, let me do this. So what I'm doing here is removing these extra things because when you copy them, it gives you extra stuff in there that you don't want. All right, so I have this text. Let's say it's a lot of text. It's a thousand words total. And if I hit enter down here, it should print this back out and give me a count. And it says there's 7,409 characters. All right, so hopefully this gives you some ideas of the different things that the for loop can be used for. And you're going to see a lot of it coming up in some of our future uh, projects. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.